Welcome back to Spank Ranch Garage. Had a pretty tough day with the old spank wagon today. Ended up uh, putting a rod through the block 100 miles from home with a trailer and two dirt bikes on the back. I revved the crap out of the motor and what happened was the rod got ejected from the hole. So that totally blows. But anyway, uh, let's get this thing ripped apart and see what happened. First thing you'll notice under here is that uh, it's disgusting. This thing blew seven quarts of oil and two gallons of coolant out in less than 100 feet. So this is absolutely gross under here. However, we can't really see the hole in the block from the bottom. We have to get a better view at that. Our passenger side here up under the turbo, you can see there that that is a connecting rod and that hole in the block is uh, not OEM. So taking a peek from the top side here, you can also see that there's substantial damage to the engine block below. So that's a first for me. I've never seen a sideways broken piston uh, where the connecting rod should be, but you will get that on these bigger trips. Under the intake, a couple nice big pieces of cast aluminum block. And then yeah, my thoughts were correct. That is a piston stuck between the counterweights and I could see the bottom of the rod there. So this is cylinder number three. Uh, took a pretty serious blow here. Either way, uh, there's no fixing this with the engine in the car. There's no fixing this engine in general. This is gonna be a full uh, replacement. Not a big deal. I've got replacements in stock. So I'm not gonna bore you guys with me taking this out. We'll get back to filming when this engine is on the engine stand. Got this thing taken out of the car. It took me almost four hours to get her out. And you can see here, both on the uh, passenger side, we've got fairly substantial engine block damage. And then you can actually see the garage door right through the other side there. So that is a windowed block. Let's do a little digging around and see what we can find. Working my way inside the block here. Oh, that's the spring out of one of the oil control rings. Oh, there's that piece of piston we saw. Let's take a better look at that. So that was a piston, 84 millimeter stock piston. You can see the ring lands are still in it, so that's good. Um, well, at least it's good for saying there wasn't a knock event. There's the other half of the piston. Interesting. Something else stuck up here in the crank. What the frick is this? No way. There's a whole PBR can in here. I must have left that in there when I built this engine. Nothing wrong with that bearing. I'll probably reuse that. Based upon the aluminum that is welded onto the crank there on the counterweights, uh, supports my theory that we had a bent rod Basically, the rod will bend a tiny bit and you'll be okay. You'll just lose compression. But if it bends any more, the piston skirts are going to whack the counterweights. Counterweights take the skirts off. Piston flies apart. Rod comes through the block. Your day's over, just like you see here. So I'm really curious to get this apart, see if there's damage to any other pistons, if there's any sign of detonation, and if there's any sign of other bent rods. So I pulled the car out real quick so we can tear this motor apart and determine exactly what failed on her. Then I gotta salvage the parts I need off of this. I already have a spare motor on a stand over here that's been waiting for this day. So no problem there. Beer. So obviously cylinder three has left the chat. Totally missing. These are main studs. I have a Nissan VQ35. 
whatever, 350Z motor. Um, ARP makes them for them. They fit perfectly for M54 head studs if you guys ever need any. I know that's pretty public now, everyone knows it, but for a while there was a lot of debate about these. They work awesome. I cannot remember what I torqued them to, but I never had a head gasket lift uh, running this thing at stock compression and, you know, over 500 horsepower, no problem with sealing it whatsoever. Uh, how far below the deck the pistons are, and then I want to look it up at the stock specification and make sure that we're okay there. So this isn't the right tool to do it, but this will work. Precision ground parallel and a caliper. And basically you just catch on that lip, put a little downwards pressure on her. Oh, first of all, zero it. And then I come up on top dead center. And when the number stops moving, you know you're there. So my theory of bent rods is out. <clears throat> Each of these pistons is just about three millimeters below deck. And to the best of my knowledge, that is correct for a three liter M54. So I can say with decent confidence, these five surviving rods are not bent. What made cylinder three let go? Let's keep digging. Oil pan off, we're looking for more clues. Shrapnel, shrapnel, shrapnel. These are all pieces of block. Here's a piece of ring. It says top right on it. So that is part of my top ring. What's interesting here is wrist pin clip. This means that was in the piston when that came apart. Another piece of connecting rod. That's nice to find. That appears to be a piece of rod as well. That's a small end bearing there, top of the rod. I thought I had the whole top of the rod, so it's interesting to find that. Okay, I misspoke on this part. I thought this was a piece of rod. This is aluminum. I do have the full top of the rod still intact. Now, pieces like this, though, are certainly pieces of connecting rod. Man, this thing has seen pretty tough moments there. You see these pieces here, they have this rounded surface to them. I gotta think about what this is. It's not clicking to me immediately. Oh, okay, this is the bottom, this is the bottom of the piston. This is the wrist pin uh, saddle in the piston. That's what that is. Okay, cool, that's nice to find. Oh yeah, it's no nice way of doing this other than doing it in front on. Too cold for that though. More shrapnel, this is part of the engine block on the bore liner side. Whew, man. Dented the oil pickup tube. This is a pretty nasty carnage here. So, taking a look here, well, one, my oil chain tensioner still looks good. Welded nut, new chain. I got a video on how to do this. I spin this motor, or I used to, to 7,350 RPMs daily. Never an oil pump failure, so. Keep that in mind, this is pretty tried and true. I've run it in my drift car. I ran it in this car for three years. Um, good mod, very cheap. Got a video on it, go look it up. Anyway, you can see here the windage tray has been exploded by this connecting rod coming around. It even dented the bottom of the oil pickup tube. So I guess I gotta tear all this off. That will not be saveable. Crazy thing is all that carnage and this rod bearing is mint. It's perfect. We've got obvious piston contact, and it's heaviest at bottom dead center, right? Because it's heaviest for when the counterweights are all the way up. And based on the rotation direction of the engine, <clears throat> which would spin this way, piston comes down, makes contact, probably blows it right up, and then comes back around again. Now the problem is we don't know how many times this went around before it shot all its parts out the side and was this really, uh, you know, piston contact here. Look at the condition of these bearings. Brand new. Brand new with 200,000 miles or whatever on them, but I would, without doubt, reuse these bearings. Uh, maybe I wouldn't reuse these bearings knowing that the big end did sustain some damage, but. Moving to the cylinder head to look for clues. Cylinder one looks really nice. Cylinder two looks okay. 
Now this motor was an oil burner. She did have a bit of an oil burning problem. Uh, it had you know pretty worn out M54 rings that were gapped pretty big for boost. And having that ring gap combined with the crappy oil control rings of the M54, she was burning some oil. Now, two exhaust valves are bent on cylinder three, so that's most likely uh, from piston contact there. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, these all have you know white buildup on them. Some more than others. I don't think I see anything here to say, yeah, cylinder three had a, you know, a particular problem worse so than others. All right, so let's review more evidence. What can we learn from the pieces that we recovered from the engine? So this pile up here is all engine block parts, right? This is the aluminum that lines the steel liner of the cylinder. Here's a piece of that steel liner. And these are just other collateral damage, right? We know an engine block failure did not cause this destruction. So we can kind of rule this stuff out, but keep it in the back of your mind. Wrist pin, no failure here. Thing looks pretty good. Just caught up in the crossfire. Sir clip, we found one of them. No idea where the other one is. It's probably on the roadway somewhere. Um, unlikely to cause this failure comes down to piston or rod. And all right, we see that the big end isn't, or the small end isn't blown open. Nothing looks crazy there, right? The rod bearing seems reasonable. No failure there. I don't see any bluing on the top of it indicating that it was getting hot or anything like that. No oiling issue. Um, but we do see that it was, you know, quite damaged. We have it broken into multiple pieces and extremely deformed. So. That's the only pieces of rod that we found. We found a piston oil squirter. This can pretty much go in the block pile. That's right below the piston. When this kind of carnage happens, that thing is gone. See you later. And then we have the piston. And this is where most of our evidence lies. So, top side of the piston here, or, well, bottom side of the piston, you could say. We have most of the pieces. We are missing some of it. But what's important to look at here is notice that the ring lands are intact all the way around on both pieces that I have here. So I have broken these motors before from too much timing and usually they'll shake the second ring land out here between the top and bottom ring. You'll crack this ring land. That ring land will actually float around in there and the car will run decent. It'll just burn oil and have low compression on that cylinder. Done that a couple times. Not the case on this one. Now, Another interesting thing, all right, how did the wrist pin come out? Well, there is enough bone blown off the bottom side of this for the wrist pin to come out. How did the piston break? That I don't know. So this is a piece of skirt here that likely came off of, well, we're not gonna be able to put the pieces back together, but that's actually exactly where that came off of. So. Is there any damage from on the bottom side of this skirt indicating that it hit the crankshaft? There actually is. And there is damage right where the crankshaft counterweight would come around and strike the bottom of where, oh, look at that. We almost have a match. However, this is not the right piece, but that also indicates the same clue here. So. Let's take a look at a good piston. So here's a good piston versus blown up piston. The area of concern is right here, right at where the wrist pin mounts. When this piston comes down, as it's coming down, the crank counterweight is coming up. And if anything is going on here, a skirt's hanging low, the piston's cocked, the rod's bent, allowing it to come down further, the counterweights hit this and just explode it and blow it to pieces. And that's what we saw. And there's no doubt that the counterweight hit the piston and exploded and the rod was left to do its thing and blow all the holes in the motor. There's no doubt about that. It's just what happened first is really what we need to understand. So for demonstration purposes, here is a three liter rod and piston mounted upside down in the engine. So you can see that clearance between the counterweight at bottom dead center. There is some room there. There's probably four and a half five millimeters worth of space. 
And you'll see, you'd really have to rock the piston far to put a skirt into it first. Not realistic if the skirts are still on it and it's in the bore, but if it is gonna hit, it's gonna be right where we saw those marks there. And it's so tricky when these motors are just grenaded because there's not a lot left to look at. So this right here, this piece tells a lot of story. And this is the matching part on this piston. You'll see that these pistons are not symmetrical. So we know exactly what corner this came off of and we can determine what side of the engine this came off of. And that's important to line up these marks. Another interesting thing to notice is you can actually see the piston manufacturer name there. And you can line that up inside this one as well. So looking at the direction of this hit, right, we know this was a counterweight or we hypothesize that this is a counterweight hitting the bottom of the piston. This interface here from the casting to the hit is smooth. It's absolutely smooth. And what you would see is if that hit came from the other direction, it would have pulled some of this aluminum over and there would have been a burr here. This is smooth. Because the way this happens is as the counterweight's coming up, the piston's coming down. So it's not like it just took a hammer right to it. It kind of pulled into it and sh This is pretty substantial evidence that we have aluminum transfer on the counterweights of the crankshaft as I noticed before so you won't see that on other ones and that's that that melted aluminum we see on the bottom of the crankshaft is from material like this hitting it damn it oh ladies and gentlemen the puzzle is coming together here look at this look at this we're reconstructing this whole half of the piston here so that even shows you better how smooth of a hit that is with no burr there. And this, this is damage, that's collateral damage there, but this is most likely what caused this engine to fail, at least with my limited expertise in exploding BMW engines. So with that said, um, I'm gonna officially rule this one as a rod deformation uh, allowed the wrist pin area to strike to strike the counterweight. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this one. Uh, this was a cool experiment to determine what actually happened. And if you've ever been in this situation, you know, the motor blows up, you've got parts everywhere. There is, it, you feel like there's no way to know what actually happened, but take your time, tear the motor down, organize the parts, determine where they came from, and then look for clues. There's a lot of information hidden in all these beat up parts. So for this one, my official theory is we had some type of connecting rod issue, you know, whether it was bent from too much torque or it was bent because somehow head gasket lifted, water got in the cylinder, whatever. I'm 95% sure that the connecting rod bent became too short. We dragged the bottom of the piston on the counterweights, breaking the bottom of the piston off. Wrist pin goes sailing, piston gets hit, rod gets hit, everything goes through the block and you got a huge mess on the side of the road. But anyway, um, let me know in the comments what you think happened. If you agree with me or you think something else happened, I'm open to ideas. This ain't my first rodeo with this, but this is my first time seeing this kind of failure. Um, I think it's a great thing to tear these engines down and try to learn what happened. You know, I could have just went pulled my spare motor out, put my parts on, threw it back in the car, went off my life, and I would never know what happened, and I'd never know how to prevent it again. So I think it's really good to try to get as close to a root cause as possible. It makes you smarter, and you learn something each time. I mean, you, you learn something you've never seen before. I've never seen this before, but here we are. So anyway, thanks for watching Spank Ranch Garage. I'll see you next time.